Now, Minister, to respond, please. Uh, Gramagat Kankorla. I'd, uh, first of all, like to thank all the deputies who have made contributions, both here this evening and indeed at the uh, initial um, input before the Easter recess on this important piece of legislation and indeed all issues relating to fisheries. I think all speakers here today have commented on the importance and the value of the fishing and angling sector uh, to the Irish economy, uh, and also the same uh, again the contributions before the recess on that occasion. Deputies Dooley, uh, Smith, Murphy, Eugene Murphy, Lawless and Stanley raised the, the value uh, of inland fisheries and the importance of development to encourage economic activity and tourism, especially in rural locations. Deputy Smith referred to the study commissioned by Inland Fisheries to assess the participation rates in angling and its economic uh, value. I am pleased that the IFI had the foresight to commission such a study. And that socio-economic study of recreational angling in Ireland uh, is the most comprehensive study of the angling sector ever undertaken and was carried out by Tourism Development International TDI, an internationally renowned specialist consultant. And the study indicates, as all the speakers have said here today, that angling contributes some €836 million Euro to the national economy, supports some 11,000 jobs, mainly in rural and peripheral areas, and all, also, almost uniquely um, to any economic sector, the vast majority of the spend of angling uh, remains within the local community. The publication of the study firmly established the important economic contribution of angling to the Irish economy and places it firmly at the top of economic and social benefit in rural and coastal um, communities. On foot of the study's conclusions and the clear identification of the development potential of the sector, IFI set about establishing the National Strategy for Angling Development. The strategy is the first comprehensive national framework for the development of our angling resource, and it aims to increase the economic contribution of angling uh, to €932 million Euro per year and increase employment by over 1,800 jobs. Inland Fisheries is already investigating the full array of potential funding uh, sources, and I am happy to confirm that our commitment to development of, uh, and to report uh, that my department provided €500,000 for funding support for the National Strategy of Angling in 2016, and I, if I reviewed, pro reviewed project applications based on this funding. I announced approval for the first €500,000 of investment for 50 community-led projects nationwide in December last. I have also secured an additional $1.5 million for the National Strategy investment for this year, and further tra tranches of support uh, will be announced uh, this year. In addition, IFI has secured funding of €536,000 from the Department of Arts, Heritage, Regional, Rural and Gaelic Affairs under the National Plan for Rural Development, which will critically um, also su support the um, national strategy. The strategy identifies three main um, uh, high-level strategic objectives, making angling accessible and attractive through information, infrastructure and support, something that Deputy O'Dowd and Deputy Cleary have spoken about, uh, tourism development through promotion of our angling resource, and recognition of, an, of angling as a key leisure and recreation pursuit. The strategy aims to develop our angling resource sustainably through balancing the economic, environmental, social and cultural aspects of any development in line with IFI's responsibility for the protection, management, conservation and development of Ireland's inland fishery and sea angling resources. The strategy is intended to deliver a wide-ranging set of investments, innovations and promotions over the coming years to develop considerable uh, benefits in terms of employment, tourism and health and well-being, particularly in rural areas. Effective and sustainable implementation of the, of the national strategy delivered uh, together with local and national stakeholders will ensure stability of existing jobs and businesses reliant on, on angling and the creation of new jobs as is the economic impact of angling grows. This will ensure that Ireland's fish stocks and angling infrastructure are protected and enhanced for both their economic value and their recreational benefit to the communities and visitors uh, they serve across Ireland. A number of deputies have raised the issues of eels, Deputy Stanley, Deputy Pinrose, Deputy O'Dowd and Deputy Fitzmaurice. Uh, Ireland's eel fishing uh, ma management plan under EU regulation 1100-2007, which included a closure of commercial fishing, was approved by the European Commission in 2009. Ireland's eel management plan and its conservation measures were reviewed in 2012 and again in 2015 in accordance with the EU regulation. Both reviews involved an examination of the latest scientific data and the conservation measures, the results of which were the subject of public consultation process. Based on the management advice from Inland Fisheries Ireland and having considered all aspects of the 2015 review, the existing conservation measures were playing in place up to mid-2018, at which time a further review was required. IFI has provided funding for a new collaborative research innovation. 
um, involving IFI scientists and a number of former eel fishermen to further develop national knowledge of the species and its medium to long-term potential for recovery. This scientific fishery was commenced in 2016 and is expected to continue for three years uh, to increase data and knowledge ahead of further re review of eel management measures in 2018. The latest advice from the International Council for the Exploration of the Seas, or ICES, for 2016, first published in October of 2015, is that the status of eel remains critical and that all anthropological mortality, e.g. recreational and commercial fishing, hydropower pumping stations and pollution, affecting production and escapement of silver eels should be reduced to or kept as close to zero as possible. There is no change in the status that the stock has been critically endangered. While I recognise fully, fully the difficulty facing eel fishermen, there is no property rights attached to public eel licences and the issue of compensation do, does not arise. However, consideration is being given to the possibility of a hardship scheme within the 2018 estimates process. I will caution, however, that such consideration, as deputies will be aware, will be against the background of competing requirements from all departments as part of the estimates process, but that request is presently with uh, the Department of Public Expenditure. As Minister for State was responsibility for inland fisheries sector, I wish to make sure that IFI is fully enabled to enforce the Inland Fisheries Acts, thereby ensuring the conservation and protection of Ireland's uh, inland fisheries and uh, sea angling uh, resource. As I have already outlined, outlined, all prosecutions under the Fisheries Acts brought by IFI for which proceedings have been initiated cannot be proceeded uh, with. Uh, I know a number of deputies have, have commented uh, on this. Um, and I would say uh, Deputy Pringle, uh, Deputy McGrath, Deputy Fitzmaurice raised uh, this issue. In February of uh, this year, the um, advice was received from the Department from the Office of the Attorney General in the course of a review of the Inland Fisheries Act 2010, and the Department advised Inland Fisheries Ireland of the relevant position. Effectively, the advice was that it was not considered sufficient to amend the Inland Fisheries Act 2010 to confirm the power to prosecute, as this power had not been explicitly transferred to IFI under the 2010 Act. An explicit power to prosecute should instead be included in Part 4 of the 2010 Act as a matter of priority. It should be noted that anyone who commits an offence is still liable to be prosecuted under the Act, and the amending legislation is being pursued as a matter of urgency, of, uh, and we are here today for that. Most of the Inland Fisheries circa 150 pending prosecutions cannot be proceeded with, and that is regrettable. IFI prosecutions which are currently in the court system will have to be withdrawn on a case-by-case -case basis and have been over the last number of weeks. However, uh, there will be no implications on persons already convicted who have not, who have not appealed their convictions within the statutory uh, appeal period. Um, when I first learnt of this, the two initial concerns I had was, one, uh, would it be a free-for-all? Would people be able to go out poaching in the morning? Thankfully, that is not the case. And I also expressed the view, as you have expressed and others, in terms of, of cases that um, prosecutions um, have, have, have taken place. And again, the advice from the Attorney General's Office, and I repeat, is that there will be no implications on persons already convicted under the 2010 Act who have not appealed their convictions within the statutory appeal period. And that is the advice coming from the Attorney General's Office, and I appreciate uh, you might not agree with it, and I'm not, I don't have a legal background, but that is the advice uh, from the Attorney General's Office. In relation to your issue, uh, I know Deputy Martin Furst raised the issue as well in relation to the Guibara uh, case. Um, Obviously, I note the assertions that you have made. I am advised that uh, the legal matter uh, referred to is for Inland Fisheries Ireland, and, and also that the matter is before the courts, so it would not be appropriate for me uh, to comment. Um, however, that the state, state's records would not concur with the deputy's assertions that there is no title uh, to the uh, fishery, and uh, on that basis, uh, the, the, the state is defending uh, its, its title. Um, Deputy Caleri raised a number of things. The Moy, thankfully, Deputy, is still the finest salmon river in Europe, if not the world. It hasn't changed. Uh, unfortunately, it's being reduced, unfortunately. The world. <laughs> the world, we say the world. So. Uh, a salmon caught on rod and line is considered to be valued at around €3,000 uh, to the local community. Now, in relation to your, your, your view of the IFI and the 20, being a 26 county body and uh, not being part of the Good Friday, the, the LOCKS Agency is a north south body. IFI uh, and the Department cooperate with the, with the LOCKS Agency and the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development in Northern Ireland. Um, they promote jointly angling um, in the whole island and they share science and research in relation to, to, to the island um, and our fisheries. Since 2001, Selling uh, rod caught salmon is prohibited. I, I, I do appreciate uh, the point uh, that you are making, but the purpose of the legislation is to ensure that there is no incentive um, to commercialise what is a recreational activity and put additional pressure uh, on, on, on our, on our um, fisheries. 
Um, in terms of the reduction of fish numbers, and again, you know, uh, obviously you're, you're, you're local to that area, and um, you would uh, have seen the, the, the fish levels uh, in the 1980s. And the reduction is of grave concern, and I think should be a grave concern to the whole country in, in terms of what is happening the salmon uh, stocks. Um, obviously, the drift net ban that was introduced was, was introduced in good faith on the, on, the, on the view that it was having an, a, a huge impact uh, on our fish stocks. Um, that's not to say that because fish stocks haven't recovered, it wasn't the correct decision to, to enact the, the, the drift ban or not. Um, uh, without the drift net ban in 2006, perhaps the fish numbers would be, would, would, would be even less uh, than they are now. The decision was made, a uh, hardship scheme uh, was implemented. In terms of what is causing the reductions, uh, again, there's multiple, multiple reasons possibly. I mean, I, I've heard you know, global warming could have an impact. The, um, the super trawlers uh, off the West Coast has been raised someone by, by, by somebody here could have an impact. There's numerous issues. People have commented even in your own river in the Moy uh, about the, the impact possibly of seals uh, in relation to, to uh, salmon stocks. Um, I don't think it would be popular to suggest that there would be a, uh, a seal culling scheme. Um, I think that would be uh, very difficult. My officials are, or wouldn't be happy with that, but um, it, it, is, uh, it has been suggested. Equally, in Limerick, it has been suggested in relation to cormorants are having a huge impact as well on, on, on taking, uh, taking uh, salmon from the water. So these are a number uh, of issues. In relation to the salmon, the, the, the larger salmon farms that you talked about, and I know BIM had plans in, uh, in Galway Bay off, uh, in a shear, uh, which was subsequently uh, withdrawn. Um, I did it in Kogal and Ilan and Inishbafen last week, and where there was representatives from Inish Turk, uh, island in your constituency, which unfortunately have a, well I won't say unfortunately, but have a different view in terms of, yeah, but they, they, they have a view of they would like to see a fish farm proceed in terms of, of its possible benefits to the local community. So, and I commented, and I, 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 uh, I, I commented that there is this disagreement between the, the, the larger uh, fish farms and also the smaller fish farms, such as off Clare Island and such as may be planned in Inish Turk, which local communities feel will be hugely important to sustain an island population. But th there is this um, disagreement. Yeah, I know I do appreciate it in relation to the sighting, but the principle of it, the impact that sea lice possibly have on, um, on, on, on you know, fish stocks returning. So there is that, there is that issue. Um, again, you've talked about some of the lovely initiatives, the, the, the ladies who are recovering from breast cancer, I wasn't aware of that, but it sounds like a, a wonderful initiative, um, you know, go, going out fishing, which obviously you have to have a certain patience for, and I believe it would be therapeutic uh, on, on that as well. Um, in, in terms of cleaning rivers, and a number of deputies have commented, um, I understand that inland fisheries have never, and certainly not in the last year, have, have ever refused a request uh, to clean a river. It has to come through um, the local authority or the OPW, and it is subject to you know, certain times of the year. So perhaps inland fisheries get wrongly blamed on many occasions in relation to this. So if there are issues, if there are cases where inland fisheries have refused um, a request, you can bring them to my, to my attention. And I, and, and I, well, you know, there's a, there's a number of bodies. Inland fisheries are a consultee uh, on this. Uh, OPW and the local authorities can apply. Inland fisheries, national parks and wildlife uh, have a role as well. And I do appreciate that there may be a lot of red tape, but um, for, for any of the main drainage schemes for the Inland fisheries have to be consulted, so that is through the local authority, and uh, they have, have, have rules and regulations in relation to what is best to protect uh, fish stocks. Um, Deputy Fismaris again also spoke about, yeah, all applications in the deputies' areas were, were turned around and approved within two weeks in, in relation to um, cleaning the rivers. Um, my officials engaged with the local authority and advised and helped with uh, paperwork, and the relevant legislation is in place since 1949, so it's not, it's not, it's not a new paperwork that's strangling the system. You know, I, I, again, you commented about sewage pollution, and you're, you're, you're right, I mean, the, you know, and that is the work that Irish Water are doing. There's still, I think, what, 43 locations around where there's, where there's water, where there's sewage polluting uh, waters, both inland and off our coast, and they have a, a plan 
uh, to carry out those. Presently, works are taking place in my own constituency in Uktarard, uh, which is the, the last major scheme that is required uh, on the Carob, uh, which is the water source for, for, for a, a many, many areas uh, in the West. And there's been investment over the years in those areas, and um, Irish Water are, are going through these plans. You, you've talked about the, the outflow rules, the EPA. Uh, set those rules. I do agree it would make sense if, there's, if, if, if it's 99 or even if it's 99.9 per cent are going to be cleaner uh, than it was. They set the rules, um, unfortunately, so I, I, I don't have the details in that particular, uh, particular case. Um, the, also, the fines in relation to the original Act in 1959, the AG's advice is to bring these up to, in, in, in line with the Fines Act, so they're just been brought up in, in, to make them relevant to today's today's world. Um, Deputy Matty McGrath um, again spoke about the appeals and I, 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 I replied to him as I replied there to Deputy, uh, Deputy Pringle. Uh, he made some, whether it was theatrics or as a, I don't know why he always has to shout so loud, but anyway, he, he made some comments in relation to IFI staff and I think Deputy O'Dowd, former Minister for the Fisheries, spoke highly of the work that Inland Fisheries do and the very important uh, work uh, that they do. They have, a they have a response to uphold the law, to protect our fisheries, to protect our natural resources. Uh, and unfortunately, there are cases where they have suffered direct threats, uh, such as a recent case last year in, in Donegal, uh, where fisheries officers doing their job, um, uh, catching people uh, at night who had nets out on the river, and uh, there was, there was uh, an altercation, there was, there was, there was a there was guns, a gun pulled, put up directly to an inland fisheries um, head, officer's head. So that's totally unacceptable. So those situations, and I think it's not right that any deputy here, uh, such as what Deputy McGrath has stated, would disparage the reputation of IFI staff and indeed board members of Inland Fisheries Ireland who have gone through a process uh, who are now appointed through the Public Appointments uh, Service. Um, a number of deputies talked about septic tanks uh, and sewerage schemes. We all know that there are issues in relation to pollution and sewerage schemes and also in relation to septic tanks. Um, the, the responsibilities of those, uh, obviously inland fisheries have a role, environmental protection agencies have a role, local authorities have a role uh, in relation to those schemes. Um, again, and Deputy Healy, Danny Healy Ray spoke, said he cannot support this bill, has mentioned septic tanks. Um, Deputy O'Dowd. Uh, again, yes, we had an open day in, in, in February, which was a success, where all deputies were invited over to meet inland fisheries, both national and their local staff members, and I think, think that was a success. He also mentioned the eels. I'm happy to see that Irish Water uh, has gotten through to them in relation to the Castle Bellingham issue. Uh, in terms of encouraging young people, again, very important, there is an initiative there called Something Fishy. If you look up somethingfishy.ie, it's an education programme where uh, fishery staff uh, attend schools. Um, Deputy Pinrose spoke uh, about the, um, uh, again, the Lake County in County Westmeath, um, and uh, I do know the potential that there is there, and that I'm sure his county will see investment under the national strategy for angling over the next period of time as well, if there's applications in. Additional manpower is always uh, an issue where we're always looking for extra resources. And again, I was happy uh, that the uh, there were some uh, um, initiatives in relation to the fish farm in Westmeath, in relation to Cullion, uh, which I think, um, uh, thankfully, we were able to um, uh, stop the threat of closure. The Board of Inland Fisheries Ireland are considering in relation to the next steps. They haven't come to me in relation to seeking any, um, any um, capital funding at this stage. Um, Deputy Wallace spoke about the pointless prosecutions because there's no fish left. Unfortunately, obviously, the Slaney has been... Has been uh, ha has been closed uh, this year. Um, again, I've mentioned the drift net uh, ban. ban. Uh, unfortunately, the, 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 um, the impact of the fish net ban wasn't as what was anticipated. The issue in relation to um, the rivers uh, are that the, the, there was initially uh, an increase in the level of uh, return of fish stocks. Uh, for the first year of, of salmon stocks, but unfortunately after that uh, it didn't happen uh, as expected and again you know, the, 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 the reasons for that are, are, are known. He talked about the catch and release policy. I have asked for a review of the catch and release policy for the 2018 uh, season uh, as a deterrent to possible poaching. This has been brought to my attention by people who operate on the Slaney, and so I'm looking for that uh, to be reviewed for the 2018 uh, scheme. He spoke about, again, uh, issues of pollution. There are matters uh, for inland fisheries, for the local authorities and the EPA uh, 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 as well, and we're continuing, obviously, to monitor uh, any of 
those issues. Um, so finally, I think, we, I think I've covered a lot of the issues. Deputy Dooley, in the last occasion, uh, I, he spoke about the Tulla and District Angling Club issues, and we will follow that up with Quilcher. He had issues in relation to access. Deputy Smith, Neil Smith talked about investment, and again, I've commented in relation to the national uh, strategy uh, for, the, for, for, for angling. So, look, at, I'd like to um, thank those deputies who have indicated their support uh, for the bill, um, Fianna Fáil, um, Labour Party, and uh, Sinn Féin, who have spoken in support uh, of this bill, and those uh, others who have spoken as well in relation to the important work that inland fisheries officers do, the requirement that this uh, bill be enacted uh, speedily. Uh, and I look forward to any, any amendments that will come at uh, committee stage in relation to this bill. Gramagov. Thank you.